Guys, this week we're talking about repetition velocity and adaptations from said velocities. And I want you all to know that the adaptation is actually in the velocity. Points to be covered. Adaptations from typical low velocity, what you guys are normally used to, just the grinds, you know, the five rep maxes. Adaptations from high velocity strength training, something that Louis Simmons introduced to the world, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, to shed a bit more light on velocity strength training, high velocity that is. So, and then we're going to measure to produce and monitor desired adaptations. All right, low velocity repetitions like you're going to watch over here. This is my man Tank with a 705. 320 is actually was like 721 pounds when they actually measured it. But the adaptations that come from those normal, typical, slow um, squats or benches or deadlifts that we're all used to doing, you're going to get maximum skeletal muscle hypertrophy, which is great. So you're going to get huge. Um, you're going to improve lateral force transmission. That's when transmitting force from the muscle fiber to the surrounding, surrounding collagen layers to the tendons. Uh, however, you're going to get a lengthened internal moment arm, which makes the muscle stronger, but it's going to be a little bit slower. And you're going to get a shift from less oxidative muscle fiber types, so, you know, like a fast twitch 2X to a more uh, oxidative type, like 2X to a 2A. And so, and that's, you know, that's inevitable. Um, doesn't mean that going the typical route is bad, but realize there's some adaptations that you might not be after, especially if you're in the phase of training that's very specific. Like, you know, you've been training three or four years and you're about to enter a world championship and you're a sprinter, then that's probably not what you want. So, um, you're also going to get coactivation of the agonist antagonists and synergistic muscles what that's saying is like when you squat really heavy like you watched my man tank right there do like this the antagonist has to help support the stability the structure of the joint at the hip and at the knee you know otherwise you know you're going to get the, you're going to pull pull bones out of place but uh that's a great thing when you're going heavy and squatting 705 pounds or 320 kilos However, it's not a great thing when you're, you know, jumping super high or sprinting because you don't want your quad to be working when you're trying to, you know, perform, you know, a recovery phase of for your sprinting. Because if your quad is working while you're trying to use your hamstrings to flex at the knee, that's going to slow that movement down, and that's not good. So, once again, it's all in the um, specificity of whatever it is you're doing. Requirements for low velocity adaptations. Um, you're going to find that a lot of these are similar, but you're going to have to use maximum effort at a maximum velocity, which, you know, those two should go in and in, but you got to be trying as hard as you can and pushing the bar as fast as you can throughout the entire range of motion. Um, you're going to get have to get close to failure, so the proximity to failure is going to matter. However, the frequency and total volume of circum maximum sets to failure. So, like, Here's what the literature would recommend. 10 plus sets per week per body part. Um, five reps per set is the, is the max amount of reps that seem to really matter. And those are going to be the ones that are getting, you know, that are slowing down. And then low reps are going to need more. Example, if you're doing triples, instead of doing three sets, you're probably going to need to do five sets. So three by five is 15. Five by three is still 15. You're still going to get the maximum number of reps required. Uh, the barbell will need to slow down for maximum force to be exerted. So that's why, like, even though you could use 40% of your 1RM, and you can go as many reps as you can, say 20, 30 reps, but the only still, even with that amount, the only reps that really count are, like, those last five that start to really slow down and fatigue the body. So... High velocity reps. So you saw tank squat versus you see in Ryan. You're seeing Ryan squat. And if you come and um, you know check us out anytime, which you're more than welcome, you will see much more of his volume, of Ryan's volume, and the my weightlifter's volume is done at a rate that you just saw versus like what you saw with tank. Because with high velocity reps, we're going to get an increased rate coding. That means the signal from the brain to the muscles to 
you know, to contract is faster. The very signal is faster. And then improvement in single fiber contractile properties to contract at higher rates, meaning whether you have 2X, 2A, whatever, type 1, all of those fibers are going to get faster. That's an adaptation from high-velocity repetitions. Improved ability to, to produce force at higher velocities, a.k.a. power. And really, it all comes down to the biggest the biggest adaptation you get from high velocity reps is going to be the rate coding. You're learning to send the signal faster. And so that kind of offsets those cross bridges that, you know, between mice and actin. Uh, those are releasing quicker at those faster velocities. So it's hard to produce as much force unless you're doing it at a, if you're contracting those muscles at a higher rate, the rate coding. So after the first two to three years of training, specificity should guide the program. You know, the first two to three years, grind, get stronger, and pretty much all the qualities of strength and athleticism will come along with that. After that, specificity starts to take over. So if you want to be fast, train fast. If you want to be slow, train slow. What are, if you're a power lifter, do you really need to do high-velocity repetitions? Probably not. So, velocity to ensure the intent that you're after is being um, gathered and how to measure that. So, intent shouldn't be assumed if you want to ensure results. A lot of times we want to make sure our athletes are gaining results, but we don't measure anything to actually ensure that. So, um, for example, velocity loss. You know, we stay with weightlifters or with anybody that, uh, that might be a power athlete, like a football player sprinter anything that needs that needs to move really fast we're going to avoid going past 20 percent 90 percent of the time so it's going to be 20 percent or it should have been or less for maximum fast switch fibers and max velocity um, loss for maximum hypertrophy so example if you want to get jacked huge and that's your main concern or if you're a power lifter just trying to get huge and strong Going to velocity loss of 40% plus is okay. It just might slow you down, but you guys don't really care. Maximum velocity can be improved simply with competition and intent being understood, meaning by if I get my athletes competing against each other, that velocity will start to go up, and they will start to understand their intent. The more that they register a fast velocity and see it, then they can put two and two together and understand what it means to actually push quickly. So velocities um, measures the quality of strength. We've we already know this. Absolute accelerative strength, speed, speed strength, starting strength. Just quickly, absolute means I'm going as heavy as I possibly can. Accelerative strength is where most of you spend the majority of your time, somewhere between 60 and 80 percent. Um, strength speed, you know, now we're strength speed and speed strength. This is the Olympic lift area, and this is where the majority of power is being um, created. And the starting strength, that's you know. How quickly can you get something moving? So rate of force development, which we went over last time. Compensatory acceleration is required for maximum motor unit recruitment and improved rate coding. We went over that once again last time with rate of force development, um, but we do need to measure uh, velocity profiles and repetition history helps to ensure that maximum compensatory acceleration is taking place, meaning if I know that at 80%, I'm pushing the bar at 0.5 meters per second, and all of a sudden today, I'm at 0.45. I'm either one, not feeling it that day, or two, I'm kind of being lazy. You know, so like, you know, by measuring it, you find out. You know, if I tell you, hey, man, you're, you're well below what you're normal normally at, and you give it your all the next set, and it's not there, it's a good time to either cut you off, because once again, specificity, I don't want to get you used to going slow. Or you push harder and you get there. RSI scores can ensure the elasticity um, properties are, one, being improved, and two, the elastic qualities are being trained. So, like, we can measure, you know, drop jumps, it's called, or depth jumps. Um, with Gym Aware, you can do it with Gym Aware. Or, you know, here I was showing you, um, you know, we used a, a jump map, but now we use only Gym Aware. And so it lets me know, are we getting better at elasticity or are we not? Um, and like if we're gaining weight, if that RSI score starts to go down, I might need to slow down and make sure that my elastic properties are coming along with it. So 
or any of the other qualities that you might desire, centric velocity, power, vertical force, peak force. You know, this is going, whatever it is that you feel you need in your sport, you need to measure it. In conclusion, not all repetitions are encompassing in the adaptation department, meaning not all repetitions are doing what you're after. Specificity is the key, as always. Are we getting fast, powerful, or strong? We need to know, not guess. You know, what season, sport, or personal quality am I? You know, what, and what season am I in? What sport am I training for? And what personal qualities do I need to improve the most? You need to know that to actually get the results you're after. Determine the quality or characteristic that needs to be improved and then measure to ensure the quality is being trained. As always, if you guys have questions, email me at Travis at DivinWare.com. I hope this was uh, informative and helping all of you guys. Let me know. Let me know if there's something else you'd rather me talk about you know, down the road. So, But I'm really enjoying this adaptation to stimulus series. I hope you are too.